beautiful chart. It really is. I mean, it's a beautiful chart. And today, I'm going to complete the trifecta, right? Because I've given you two pieces of the trifecta. There is a third piece. The first piece, obviously, being Fibonacci. The second piece, obviously, being Elliott Waves. And the third piece being Harmonic Patterns, which is actually a combination of Fibonacci and Elliott. So that is the trifecta we're going to talk about today. But just look at this chart. Look how beautiful it is. Look how everything fits in the perfect, obvious, clear structure, which we see top of wave three, a wave four down. This is a wave five. That completes the cycle. Where are we? In an ABC correction. Here we go, A, B, C, that heart wrencher gives us the three-headed reversal structure. That's where we are. Now, where are we within this B wave up to where B and C intersect? Where are we? Well, it looks like we're completing a wave four down. And look how beautifully that wave four down is coming to that two, three, six, just like you would always imagine it would, right? And then, you know, maybe a wave five fast, slow, doesn't matter. We do know where that wave five is likely to end up. It's likely to end up at that 702. There's our Fibonacci's. Okay, so let's take it one step further with identifying patterns in markets, okay? Because as you've probably noticed, there are these M's, right? You see some M's around here. You might even see a giant W right here. You see that giant W? probably see some M's, you know, all these M's. Look, there's a nice M. You know, just glancing around, you see M's and W's, right? You guys have seen many, many M's and W's in these charts. We've all subconsciously talked about them and maybe consciously talked about them. Well, guess what? There's a real whole study. There's a whole detailed, nuanced thing about using these M's and W's, and these are the harmonic patterns. All right, so let's just do the basic rundown, because once again, this is nothing complicated, because you already understand Elliott, and you already understand Fibonacci, so this is just bringing that together in a very specific organization. Notice these M's and W's, okay? So look at this, like, butterfly, right? What is this? This is just a W, right? You see it's a W, right? The start of the W is X, the end of the W is D, this relationship here, this number, 1.27, that's the Fibonacci level if you go from X to A. So we always talk about the X to A point. You measure from X to A and you get these Fibonacci ratios. You get 0.127, you get 886 between A and C. Now, not trying to get ahead of myself, just saying these numbers are Fibonacci ratios. That's all these numbers are. So these specific, you got the butterfly, right? You got, you got the bat, right? You got these, oh, more M's, right? So... Oh, what do you notice? M. Oh, M is a bullish pattern, right? Okay, M. W. Ooh, that's a bearish pattern. M's are bullish. W's are bearish. That's all that matters. The D point is where these suckers pop off. So here's the point. The M. The M from X to D is a completed harmonic pattern to the bull side because when you get to that D level, you spring them off like a harmonic on a steel string acoustic. That's what these are. These are harmonics. Right? So the W is the exact same thing, just inverted, right? You get X all the way to D. You get to that D point, you spring them straight to hell like a harmonic, like a pinched off harmonic. That's a bearish, right? Because if you complete the W, it's going down. If you complete the M, it's going up, right? Now, here's where the Elliott waves tie in, right? Look at this, right? What is this? Is this not an ABC correction, right? There's A, B, C, the heart wrencher, is this D, right? But that's a C heart wrencher, right? You set a new low after that B point, and this was, this could have been a wave five, right? So this would have been a wave, X to A would have been a wave five, and then you've completed the five wave pattern, and then you get an A, B, C heart wrencher correction. And these A, B, C corrections can be organized as these M's and W's. So these M's and W's are fractals, micro, macro, everywhere in between. That's the nature of Elliott waves. So this just fits along with that and takes the Fibonacci ratios and brings it one step closer. Okay. So as long as you understand M's are bullish. W's are bearish. That's all that matters. And there's variations. Oh, the crab. I like the crab. Look at the deep crab. Look how bullish that is. Look how C heart wrencher that D is. You're like, dude, 
I lost everything. And what does this thing do? It springs them off like a cannon when it gets down to that D level. And this is the perfect ABC correction, right? Look at that. You completed a wave five up here. You're in an A, B, C heart wrench correction. You complete that and you're going to get some bullish momentum. Now, how much bullish momentum you're going to get from those spring off points or how much bearish momentum you're going to get from those spring off points is completely dependent on the bigger economy picture in all these other like, you know, world news narratives. Just like when we're talking about Fibonacci's, we're, we're asking ourselves, like, is the stage set on this planet for these prophecies to be fulfilled? We have to ask ourselves these questions. So those questions can answer questions like, how far is this D going to spring off? Is it going to make a new high above it? You know what I mean? Like this kind of stuff. So all that matters is these are reversal patterns and you can literally link market trends by just linking M's and W's and you see reversal patterns to the upside and the downside. So what do you think I'm about to do now? I'm about to show you where these are happening in the markets because we got to get serious. Like, you know, lots of money and future and reality is at stake if we play our cards right here so we better know the holy trifecta of elliot fibonacci in harmonics right so here we are so first chart i want to look at besides bitcoin is the dxy because i got scary good news for you right oh people you know we're scared here oh everybody's scared because the dxy is going up that's why it's going up because they're scared right that's the whole thing the market people are scared so they're going to cash but also this is the interesting point here I believe this pump is due to a lot of shorts closing positions and going to cash. Let me repeat. The DXY is pumping because shorts, people who are short the market, are closing positions and going to cash. I'll corroborate that with one chart, and that's the BTC shorts chart. This is very low. This means a very small number of people are shorting Bitcoin. Very small number compared to these other numbers over, you know what I'm saying? Like very few people are shorting Bitcoin. This is just one example. You can look at how many people are shorting other assets as well, but I'll just use Bitcoin just to kind of make one specific corroboration example of my thesis, which is that the DXY is pumping in part due to the fact that that people are closing short positions and going to cash, not just on Bitcoin, but I'm sure in other markets as well. So what does that mean? If people are closing short positions and going to cash, well, that means they might be going long soon. Maybe not yet. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but you see my implication here. Maybe you want to rewind that and watch that again if it's not clear. Hopefully that's crystal clear. How does that pay play into the DXY and what the DXY is doing here? Well, What's the first thing you see on this chart? Oh, you see maybe a W here. Hmm. What do we just say about Ws? Oh, maybe another W. They're bearish. Ws are bearish. What is this? Here we go. Now we're getting into some technical stuff here. But there's this measuring tool that measures by harmonic patterns, and it's built into TradingView. I don't even have an account on TradingView. I'm using like... You know what I'm saying? Like the basic tool here, just like Fibonacci, you can use. It's this pattern. This is the harmonic pattern thing. So look, it gives us those Fibonacci ratios. What's this 762? That's just the this. That's over here. That's the distance between the X and the A and what Fibonacci level is met in between. That's this relationship. So the X to the A point is this same measurement. You see where that, you see that confluence of these? These are the same. I'm saying that the harmonic patterns are all just Fibonacci ratios, okay? So what is this shape? This is a W, right? Which W is it? Well, this number can help us kind of narrow down which W it is. It doesn't really matter. It's just like W's are bearish, but this is a specific textbook W shape. It's a bearish Gartley, a bearish Gartley. What happens when you complete a bearish Gartley? This one right here, right? This one. Notice it's just approximate like 786 ratio up here, 886 ratio down here. It's a W. This one's not as high. The D is not as high as the X, right? So this is a bearish Gartley, X to D, right? Look at that. What happens after these bearish Gartleys complete? They send these suckers down like a harmonic pinch off of a steel string acoustic. So that's kind of a nice confluence that that W is ended up right around a 702, a level where we've often seen a lot of selling pressure come in, you know? But these could go higher, right? This could prove to be... Well, this is another specific type of pattern. This could be another 
You know, it's like, this is why it doesn't matter, right? It, it, it's just W's and M's. And look, see, this might be a bearish butterfly, like a bigger ratio here. 1.27, right? If this thing keeps going up. Either way, either freaking way, the W at the D point sends them straight to hell. Either way, right? So it doesn't matter if it stays a Gartley or whatever. But right now, we have a very textbook Gartley. And the reason why it's textbook is because this number is dangerously close to the 786 level, 768, it's like almost, you know, it's like almost exactly that. Down here, we see 87, that's dangerously close to 886. So between those two rate Fibonacci ratios, dangerously close to 786, dangerously close to 886, what does that give us? That's the, that's the bearish Gartley, right? 786 is textbook, 886 is textbooks. I'm saying that our shape is dangerously close to this bearish Gartley, and that means we're on the brink of a massive reversal on the DXY, even though this thing's pumping. And we can even ask ourselves, why is it pumping? I just offered the explanation of people closing short positions on Bitcoin, but also through other markets as well, right? So yes, the confluence is still here. It's clearer than ever. I'm bringing in one more corroboration point here. The harmonic patterns, like actually literally like now it's like whoa like all my theories originally about this stuff that music and rhythm is everything in the markets well these harmonic patterns make me think that's exactly what it's all about so here we go so i'm learning my harmonic patterns i'm showing you guys because there's a great confluence here with this perfect w formation so let's look at bitcoin for some harmonic patterns right when we see a massive W formation right here, what do those W's give us? They give us a spring straight to hell. That makes perfect sense, right? That's aligned with everything we've been talking about, right? So then let's zoom in a little bit farther. Oh, how many M's do we see? So these M's are bullish, right? Well, here's my favorite M that I see right here. We see the deep crab, deep crab on Bitcoin here, right? Look at this one. This is that. This one springs them off right? All the way up to the 702. So the thing is, is this spring of offer could go farther than the 702. But if we think on that macro world news narrative whole, you know, all the confluence of all realities, do we really think it's going to break through the 702? No, but we do know this D point from this deep crab M bull M formation is going to spring them up. It's going to, sp it's already springing them up, right? That's what I'm saying. And let's just review some Elliott waves real quick. Cause look how beautifully these M's fit in our Elliott waves, right? We've got our wave one up, two down. It makes an M, it springs it up. Look at this. Look where we are. We're forming another M, dude, right? Obviously, that's an, that's a perfect bullish crab. It's another crab. You've got the fractal crab from the macro crab. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is perfect. This is exactly what you want to see. And the other thing is, oh, oh what's our favorite level that is probably respecting? Oh, the 0.236, dude. Like, what more confluence could literally you ask for at this point? Higher high, higher low perfect bullish M fractal formations exactly inside an easily identifiable Elliott wave pattern within this head and shoulder reversal structure as a part of this ABC correction. What more do I have to tell you? What more do I have to tell you? Hmm. I don't think a lot. I think we're on the brink here of everything ever. And I think I've just corroborated it once again with another pattern that you can go and you can find all these patterns for yourself and go look through the markets and you can make your trades based on these because these are everywhere, right? You just... You can use these on the small time frames. Like you got to give credit where credit's due. Like there's this guy, Scott Carney, he made this software that actually identifies the harmonic patterns for you because it like actually uses AI to like identify all the ratios just by sight, right? Like we could go and measure all the ratios ourselves, but if you have the Scott Carney software, all of these M's and W's will just show up on the screen and you'll know that they're exact perfect textbook measurements because that's what the software does, right? So when you have these really textbook ones, you know, the, the reactions tend to be stronger. And obviously, once again, it's related to the self-fulfilling prophecy. Now you have literally algorithms 
fulfilling the self-fulfilling prophecy of harmonic patterns, really entrenching those deeper, just like we've talked about with Fibonacci's, how deeply they are entrenched and why they are so deeply entrenched. Elliott Waves, how deeply they are entrenched. Why are they so entrenched? We've now got another organization of Elliott Waves. They're related to reversals, right? These M's and W's are reversals. That's what it's all about. And we just have a beautiful alignment with all of our theses of markets within that framework of harmonic patterns. So I'll ask one more question. What do we think is setting up here, you know, on Bitcoin for a harmonic pattern? Well, I would think on a very rudimentary basic level, something like this. There's your, you know, somewhere where these somewhere around these like middle areas could be here, could be here. I'll go with here. I'll go with there. <laughs> Does it get any more basic? <laughs> like a W formation within the fractal of this larger W formation that's aligning with our 702 to send the sucker for a nice C heart wrencher correction. And who knows what happens after that? We don't really need to know or care at this point. But like everything we've said so far is all aligned with this head and shoulder reversal structures. And we've got these W showing up as we're getting that 702. But you know, on this W formation, Look how that's perfectly aligned with our Elliott wave structure here. You know, I mean, it's just what else more do you want? Like, obviously, maybe it's potentially the greatest moment of all time to be buying altcoins. You know, it probably is. Probably is, honestly. It probably is the greatest moment of all time to, like, literally be buying New Cypher. Like, literally, like, I don't I don't want to buy New Cypher at 40 cents. That's, that's hard for me to accept because, you know, because we've already talked about this. But I can acknowledge that that is, like... Um, screaming free money is what that is like, like the cheapest on this entire range and even cheap relative to the first new cypher pump. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's going to go ballistic, right? And why? It's because we've corroborated where the larger market cap assets are how the DXY is interacting with those larger market cap assets. If we believe that the DXY is running out of headroom, we believe that Bitcoin has upside. We believe that all coins have upside. And you know that we like to corroborate it one step deeper with the good old Dow Jones Industrial Average. Dude. Oh, man. This is too good, right? Because now you can already see all the M's, dude. They're right there. You can see all the W's too, right? So it makes too much sense. And look... Look at our wave pattern too. It's the same friggin' one that I've had on here since literally, you know, this wave two down situation, right? This is a wave one up and the final five wave move of the Dow Jones, at least according to my theory, right? That's you get a five wave move there and you complete this massive pattern that goes all the way back to the financial crisis. Like literally just reviewing case anybody new is watching right so that's why i'm reviewing like we've talked about this wave one up two down massive wave three we know that wave threes are typically the longest so that aligns with this structure right and then covid you know 2020 is when we had this epic uh wave four down right this is a wave four down because that's only wave two down so wave four down is right there and then you're in a wave five where do we think it's likely that wave five is taking us most likely to the 4.236 extension because as we've talked about and examined that's what happened to the s p 500 it already hit it's actually above the 4.236 extension and then we've talked about how bitcoin did not quite reach the 4.236 extension based on the 2017 bull run to the subsequent bottom in 2019 where did it reach instead just corroborating some just some key points here these are these are important right it made it, you know, just just shy of the 4.236, right? So we know that these levels are respected. And now we have harmonic patterns to further organize this. So that does serve the thesis that we definitely think Dow Jones has more headroom, you know. And honestly, I've I've said before, if I'm wrong about this current wave count, which I don't think I am because it's literally playing out exactly like literally i thought it would right like so i have no reason to think i'm wrong yet but one contingency thought is obviously this one right is you might get to hang up at this 702 right so you haven't quite hit up you've almost hit it up right but not quite so you have to measure from the top to the local bottom 
and I'm taking that measurement because that's a top of a wave three, right? So you're in a wave four down. So it would make sense that the wave four down is a Fibonacci localized structure. Within that Fibonacci localized structure, you have not made it to the 702. So in the worst case scenario of this situation, like the most bearish situation would be if the Dow Jones only makes it to the 702. So my only point is just we haven't even gotten to the point where the contingency plan has validated or invalidated. The original thesis is exactly intact, like crystal clear clockwork. Time has only validated the same theory, right? The, the, the ABC correction, the perfect W, right? So you get this W, right? What happens when you complete a W? Oh, you're going to get sent to hell. Well, that's what's going on right? You have wave one up. You're in wave four down. That's what this is. Wave four down. It's literally textbook. And what do you see? You see a W. That's a nice W formation on that wave four down. So we could get maybe some more downside. It doesn't even matter because the waves have a lot of wiggle room from where they are right now. And the reason why there's so much wiggle room is because the markets are playing exactly in the lines of the waves. So it's like, uh, like, am I, oh, geez just feels like this is really clear right now. There's a lot of clarity. There's a lot of synchronicity. There's a lot of confluence. That confluence is among markets, but it's also among concepts, right? These are real patterns we're looking at. We're looking at real patterns that are being validated before our eyes. Like just for example, this M. What happened at the bottom of this deep crab? This is a deep crab right here. It sprung them off. It sprung them off like it always does. The bullish M springs them off, right? Just, just I'll just show you in case you don't see that that deep crab right there. That's a crystal clear deep crab. I mean, what what more do you want from me? Literally, dude. Just like you know this W, you could expect this W to send some downward pressure here, which is what you're getting. I don't know if that's the bottom of it. Maybe there's more. We got plenty of wiggle room. Nothing is even to worry about. Lots of buying opportunities in this moment. I think acknowledging that like a lot of altcoins, not just New Cyber, but a lot of altcoins are really holding a lot of consolidation right now there's a lot of consolidation on new cypher at this level you probably be pretty safe buying at this level statistically speaking right and if we can actually say that and you can actually agree with that statement then you could probably make the next statement which is that yeah that thing might be popping off any minute now right because if these minds are aligned to see exactly what we're all seeing these self-fulfilling prophecies you know like so deeply entrenched here in 2022 right like we're not the only ones thinking that new cypher is a screaming free money play right now so I'm, I'm curious to see what happens this week i mean this week is it's a perfect setup because if all of these patterns are this obvious to me and you're watching this video and I just showed you why they should maybe be obvious to you if you can put all those pieces together for yourself and see firsthand, then we are not the only people seeing this exact confluence. And I bet you people with a lot more money than me are seeing all these things. The whales, right? And I'm a little fish. I'm going to ride on those whales until I'm a whale, right? That's what I'm doing, dude. God, dude! Breaking away. Oh, wait, nah, I'm trying to stay The phrase is a maze And I only record when I play the same Mistakes pave the way to state the obvious Ramifications of substantiated machinations Of magnificent synchronization